Welcome to Digital Asset News, take a top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets and break it down to bite-sized pieces. Today we've got some concerning news, but it does make a lot of sense. BlackRock sells dollar for Asian currencies into US vote. And what's going on here is they are essentially shorting the dollar. This isn't a big deal unless you consider that BlackRock has almost 8 trillion assets under management also. MasterCard CEO says Bitcoin makes people scared. I have to disagree. I think what makes people scared is comments like that. Kraken CEO Jesse Powell rings out the truth and says DeFi scams should take their losses. And basically what he's saying is that they need to do the things to make them successful because over the last month or two, we've seen a lot of DeFi projects not only fail, but take a lot of people down with them. And we'll go over all that plus question of the day, which comes from Jake, which asks a pretty good question, which is if everybody moves from gold to Bitcoin, should I even really have any gold? So that's all coming up plus what's going on in the market. But first I wanna make two announcements. Uh, first up, uh, Voyager. I had CEO Steve Ehrlich on last week and he had said that changes were coming and that they were working diligently to be able to have cryptocurrency and certain digital assets be taken off the platform. And I just asked him, when's it gonna be Cardano? And he said, soon. And here we are today, announcement that Cardano is now, you are able to take Cardano off of Voyager platform. So this is just one of those things that he had said is gonna happen and it did. Also, he said that uh, the airdrop for XRP for the Spark token is also going to happen before the actual airdrop. So we will see how that happens. But he did say, give me two or three weeks. And uh, this is just one thing. So thank you, Steve, for uh, actually doing what you said you were gonna do. Also, uh, before the big presidential election here in the United States, I'd like to get somebody from Votes on. Votes is a topic that we had covered about a month ago or so. And this is using blockchain to enable voting through your mobile app. And I think it's a a fantastic concept so I've already tweeted out to these guys to see if they would come on but uh, if anybody knows anybody or knows something about them or just reach out to votes and say hey come on digital asset news because I'd really like to get them on here and see how that works with blockchain voting because I think it could be the future all right so the market so today it is October 27th it is uh, about 3 p.m. Uh, Texas time things are getting late but uh, a lot of things going on just getting to this so uh, what do we got well, uh, Bitcoin is doing fantastic. That's up four and a half percent, 16% for seven day average. And uh, we're looking at uh, 13.6. And the question that I had was, is Bitcoin gonna break through 14K? I mean, if it is, that's that's like a real true bull run territory. Let's see if it actually happens. I think it can, but uh, who knows? Let me know in the comments section if you think it can actually happen before this weekend's, or do you think that all the traders and the whales are gonna take a bunch of profits and push it below 13? That'll be interesting. Ethereum above 400, up 2.7%. I like that. Tether is uh, sitting at around 16 billion market cap, so that's great, I suppose. XRP at 25 cents, uh, market cap 11.3. Bitcoin Cash uh, is sliding into that number five spot at 1.7% up at 263. And if you notice something, uh, the five, six, and seven. And even really the eighth spot, I mean, it's really a, a, a minuscule amount really separating them all. They're all around that 4 billion market range. So uh, we'll see uh, as that fluctuates throughout the week. But uh, everything's up. Everything's up today. It's a good day. What can I say? I mean, it, here's the thing. It's a good day for most people. For me, it's kind of a depressing day because this is one of those days where I was, I was kind of hoping that yesterday would continue with that downward slide so I can, could keep accumulating at very discounted prices, but uh, it wasn't meant to be. I mean, I still got a dollar cost average, but uh, uh, you know, I was kind of hoping to do that <laughs> with a little less, less price action, but uh, hey, it is what it is. So uh, congratulations today for some people and other people like me is like, man, I because I know where this whole space is going. So I'd like to buy it uh, cheaply as I can. I've been doing it for the last, you know, three years. So uh, I guess at some point I'm going to have to just give them the fact that we are going to hit a pretty big bull run. I know it's weird to hear that, like, oh, we're in a bull run. How awful is that? But, you know, I just see where it's going. I'd like to accumulate more, but uh, it is what it is. And what else we got? Anything really of a killer? Uniswap up 6.5%. That's good, I suppose. Uh, 3.6 for Celsius. Again, this is one of the ones I really want to pick up a lot of, but uh, I'll still pick it up. But uh, now I have to pay 3.6 premium. I guess if you look at it like that, 8.4% for compound. So everything's you know fluctuating pretty well. And you know we're seeing in the top 10 uh, major green. So I like to see that. Anyhow, 
let's jump into uh, today's top stories. And before I jump into it, I just want to make mention that uh, Ledger is running a promotion right now. So if you don't have a Ledger or you want to pick up another Ledger, like I have four myself, because I don't like to, you know, keep everything in, in, in one place. I'm just weird like that. But uh, if you want to pick one up, uh, just enter in the promo code Digital Asset News, and I'll give you 20% off. Do all you got to do is once you're checking out the little discount code right here, just type in Digital Asset News. Click apply, and there you go, 20% off. So just want to let you know, and you can pick one up for on the cheap. All right, let's jump in today's big story. So BlackRock is uh, short the dollar. That's interesting, and uh, I'll tell you why. So this is the first report on Bloomberg, and it states the world's biggest money manager is shorting the dollar on expectations that unprecedented fiscal and monetary stimulus will prolong its losses, regardless of who wins the U.S. election. This is true, 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 true. Uh, people ask me, well, you know, who do you think is going to win and how is it going to affect uh, the market, crypto, digital assets? And, you know, I mean, to a lesser extent, the, the traditional market, which I don't really care about. And really, you have to look at it like this. It doesn't matter who win, uh, who wins in the short term. It, it's all about what's going to happen in the long term. And whoever wins, that will not matter. So really, if you look at it, if Donald Trump wins, then it'll give a little bit of an artificial bump and it'll still go down. If Biden wins, there'll be a little bit of a slough. It might come up a little bit, but it'll still go back down. So it doesn't matter the short term. I don't really care. The long term, you cannot keep quantitative easing. You cannot keep printing money. You cannot have a reduction in GDP. You cannot have so many small businesses closed and so many people out of work. And then to a lesser extent, uh, the market to keep pushing forward. There is a huge disconnect between the economy and the, the traditional markets. But at some point, the fiscal policy will eventually catch up. And again, so I don't care who really gets uh, elected. In the long, grand scheme of things, things are going to go down in the traditional sense. And that's why it is a great time to be in cryptocurrencies and digital assets. Because uh, just like uh, Shamath Paliabataya says, he goes, this is schmuck insurance. This is when, uh, for the traditional market, when it goes down, it's to, to be that hedge against all the chaos that is eventually going to happen. So again, doesn't matter who, who wins, it's all going to go the same way. Anyhow, BlackRock Inc. holds a modest short in the greenback against the likes of the Chinese yuan, Indian rupee, and Indonesian rupiah. I think I said it right, said uh, Naraj Seth, head of an Asian credit in Singapore. The three Asian nations are among those best positions to benefit from a weakening dollar as investors seek out higher yielding assets and growth. And you have to understand, uh, because they're showing the dollar, it doesn't mean they're going to make a ton of money. But however, that might not be true because uh, remember, uh, BlackRock, <laughs> they have almost a trillion assets under management, 7.43 as of 2019. So uh, maybe this year, maybe they hit that 8 trillion. So it's a lot of money, a lot of smart money uh, that could potentially be in there. So uh, there could be a windfall uh, with, with just the massiveness uh, as far as investments go. On Monday, BlackRock strategists downgraded their views on treasuries, surprise, on growing likelihood of significant fiscal expansion under a unified democratic government. So you have to understand, it's not so much that they're shorting uh, the dollar right here. I mean, that's that's just what they're doing. But what it is, is it, it signals the rest of the massive institutional foundations to go, look, BlackRock is doing this, so maybe they know a little bit of something that we don't. I mean, we've always suspected that, but they're really getting into it, so maybe we should. And then another institution says, hey, look what those guys are doing, then we should. And then it just becomes a reciprocating flywheel of information, and they just start to really gain momentum. Before you know it, uh, the dollar is really getting short or shorted, which leads to consequences down the road. So in my humble opinion, this is great. Because the worse that the dollar does, the better that Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies, and digital assets will do. So if you have a huge entity such as BlackRock saying, dollar's going down, we're going to short it, you're going to see other people do the same thing, other corporations, and then on and on we go. So how long do you think it is before all those corporations that are sitting on a pile of money goes, you know what? Uh, just like MicroStrategy and just like Square did, we should probably be getting into this game because uh, we are sitting on, as Michael Saylor calls it, a melting iceberg. So let me just think in the comments section. Let's move on. Next up, MasterCard CEO says Bitcoin makes people scared. And um, I mean, if you're scared of making profits, I suppose. But in, 
in all honesty, I have to say that I, I have to bring this up because these are the types of questions that people are going to ask you as time moves forward, and we really get into that parabolic bull run. I think we can all, we can all feel it right now. Uh, there's a big momentum shift, and I think 2021 is going to be uh, one of those just one of those years. So you're going to have to be uh, one of those people. Uh, that has to explain Bitcoin to your friends, family, and loved ones, even after they ridiculed you for investing in the cryptocurrencies. <laughs> let's just be honest. So let's dig into this article. So MasterCard CEO Ajay Banga, that's a good name, took a swipe at Bitcoin, the world's largest cryptocurrency, during the virtual Fortune Global Forum uh, today, October 27th. Banga prefers central bank digital currencies, or CBDCs, over Bitcoin, surprise, since he believes that they are better at improving financial inclusion around the globe. And I was, when I first read this, I actually did a live stream today on Theta, and I asked this question. I said, are CBDCs really that great for financial inclusion? I mean, they, they are stable, uh, let's be honest. But the problem with CBDCs that I see is that um, you can confiscate them, you can take them over, you can freeze them. And for governments that are out there that are doing this all the time, uh, this is a bad proposition for the people who are unbanked. Now, look, it's better than being you know, unbanked to have something. But in all honesty, for censorship resistance, CBDCs are, are awful. And then it, it really all depends on what the CBDC is actually uh, backed with. If it's the central bank of that government, then sometimes the government themselves are bankrupt. So what is that really being backed up against? And then if it's backed up against the U.S. dollar, I mean, we just saw a nice little story about shorting the dollar and then how, I mean, really the dollar is going to weaken. So is that so good? Um, let me think in the comment section. I just don't see it. Anyhow, the CEO said the wild swings of cryptocurrency makes people very scared. And sure, I mean, who wouldn't be scared when if you bought Bitcoin last month and you spent you know, 11,000, and now it's almost 14,000. That's scary. That's scary to make all those gains. He says here, uh, can you imagine someone who is financially excluded trading in a way to get included through a currency that could cost the equivalent of two Coca-Cola bottles today and then 21 tomorrow? That's not a way to get them included. That's a way to make them scared of the financial system. Okay, there's, so, there's two things. First of all, uh, let's say we're in a third world country, right? And we have a charity set up and we give away 20 Satoshi, whatever it is, 100 Satoshis, uh, it doesn't matter. And then, and we did this at the beginning of October. And now, now they have like, instead of 20 Satoshis, they got like 30 Satoshis. And like, wow, I just didn't do anything and I just gained all this money. This is fantastic. Now, as opposed to like like a CBDC and then it's it's just stable, maybe it's uh, backed against a good currency that, that the government is kicking out, maybe it's not. So that's one of those things where it's like to increase, uh, that would, would be very scary. No, wouldn't it be awesome? However, on the flip side, it is very true. Uh, we just saw what happened to Bitcoin during uh, the coronavirus outbreak in March. And we saw it go from uh, robust nine to ten thousand, all the way below four thousand. So that is one of those problems. I mean, once you see his XRP, that thing hasn't fluctuated at all. It's been like a quarter. I talk about it all the time. So that wouldn't be so bad. But again, uh, as far as like censorship re resistance, you can censor a central bank digital currency. They can freeze it. They can stop it. They can do whatever they want to. Bitcoin does not allow that. So I think that is the much superior option. And then here's another thing. And I actually got this from the Theta live stream. Someone said the same thing with uh, with stocks. You know, if, if you want to be talking about how awful these financial instruments are, stocks are the same way. You, you buy it for a dollar, maybe it goes up to 100 bucks. Or maybe it stays at a dollar, goes a little bit down. They're all financial instruments. So why not just use the ones to the best of their abilities? Anyhow, to finish up, this wasn't the first time Bank said this. Uh, back in 2017, he said the exact same thing. He used that bottle analogy, which I think is kind of weird. But he says, if I pay for a bottle of water in Bitcoin, one day it's two bottles for a Bitcoin. The other day it's 9,000 bottles. This does not work. Any currency needs stability and transparency. Otherwise, you will get the illegal activities in the world. Well, we know what I'm going to say about that. I mean, if you want to look at all the illegal activities and what is being financed to that, it's the U.S. dollar. So don't give me that nonsense. And the second thing is that over time, Bitcoin has been an excellent store of value. And look how much it has improved just this year alone. So if you're going into an area, third world country, 
that is unbanked, maybe Bitcoin isn't the, the most fantastic idea as far as stability from day to day to day operations. Store of value is fantastic. Maybe there's something else. I just don't believe that central bank digital currencies are going to be the answer, especially with censorship resistance. Let me know what you think in the comments section. Let's move on to our next article. Next up, DeFi scams should take their losses, Kraken CEO Jesse Powell states. And this is a pretty good one. It's like gangster move by Jesse here. So Kraken CEO Jesse Powell lambasted or skewered, we're going to call it, DeFi scams for rushing their rollout and then expecting exchanges to bail them out as soon as things go south. Powell adds that these projects that fail to invest in insurance and audits have to take their losses in order to be enlightened. And this is the comment uh, that was put here. I'm not going to go to the Twitter one because uh, it's a lot more colorful language. So this is the basis of what he says. He goes, I will not accept your attempt at externalizing the cost of your hasty, reckless rollouts. Invest in audits, insurance, and please do your own research. Taking your losses is the only way to enlightenment. And so here's the issue with, with these DeFi projects. Uh, Kronhey and the, and the rest of those uh, people who actually make up DeFi, first of all, I like DeFi. I think it's going to be fantastic. I just don't agree with rolling it out and out without testing it and allowing people to get into it and lose a bunch of money. Obviously, you know, freedom reigns if they want to go out there and do whatever they want. But a lot of people got wrecked and they didn't really know what the heck they were doing. So I guess it is a learning experience. And that's why I will always be on this channel to tell you the exact same thing. Don't chase shiny objects. <laughs> that's it. But uh, this keeps happening again and again and again. I can understand, you know, like, okay, first time, all right, fool me once, shame on me. But in all honesty, it's just getting ridiculous. I mean, this is like, I mean, we just covered one yesterday, another DeFi project. I even forgot the name. There's been so many that they were hacked for 24 million and the hacker returned 2.5, which is crazy, but whatever. So let's just do a little timeline dance. So this is just a little history of, of failures. So in early August, yield farmers deposited more than 400 million to an unaudited protocol called Yam Finance. Remember that? Gone. I mean, maybe it's still around. I'm not for sure, but it lost a ton of money. Then, uh, then there was the Uniswap uh, fork, Sushi Swap. What happened there? I think we all remember. The Master Chef just took off with the money, and I don't even know is Sushi even the top 100. Let's take a look. Let's see Sushi. 115. So that's quite a fall uh, from where it was before. Let's just take a look real quick, see where it's at. Hey, 68 cents. It's up 10% today. <laughs> it's pretty good. So uh, let's just see where it was before. And this doesn't look hot. So here it was. I think it's height. It was how much? 11 bucks. Wow, pretty good. And then, uh, so here's the thing about DeFi. You can make a lot of money, but then you got a lot of people holding the bags. So if you're into that, that's cool. Uh, I'm not, but uh, you can give it a shot. And then here's where it went to, and then two we're down here. So yeah, so there's that sushi swap, and then they managed to outdo themselves by pouring millions into Eminence, the untested protocol of urine finance founder Andre Kronhey, only to be hit by a hack within the same day. So it just it boggles my mind how people just keep buying into it, buying into it, buying into it, and for what? Just so you can gamble and see if you can make money out of it. And uh, it's like playing musical chairs, but a lot of people, they get the, the chair pulled on, underneath them. And there's only so many people that can actually walk away with a profit. And a lot of people don't. So to Jesse here, to Kraken, I like Kraken a lot anyhow. I mean, they, they got that banking license in Wyoming, so I'm really happy for them and, and good about that. I like to see someone speak up about these projects because it's just ridiculous. In all honesty, it's actually, if you think about it, it's a lot, le it's a lot better than those leverage trading platforms, which do like 50 or 100x. At least for the DeFi, you only lose your money. When you have leverage programs uh, where you're trading at leveraged amounts, 50x, 75x, whatever else, you lose a lot of money. So I guess in that regards, I can, to me, I think leverage is one of the worst, but let me know what you think in the comment section. Let's move on to our last piece. So our last piece is Q of the day, and it's pretty good. It's about gold and Bitcoin. It was a great question by Jake, so I thought I'd throw it in there because uh, it needs to be answered. Let's jump into the office. All right, everybody, welcome back to uh, the office. It is a uh, brisk, cold day here in El Paso, Texas. It is actually snowing. It's a very strange day. So that's why I got this uh, fantastic sweater on. Anyhow, so this, uh, the Q of the day, it comes to us from Jake. Uh, Jake looks like he's from the, the Army. Uh, welcome, Jake, and uh, thanks for your service. Uh, veteran myself. So let's see what he has here. So Jake comes up, it's a pretty good question. He says, hey, uh, Dan, I watch your channel every day, and I get so much out of it. Great. Thanks for watching, first of all. Uh, my question is in reference to the statement that 
portfolios nowadays should consist of gold, silver, and Bitcoin. This is what I was talking about uh, yesterday, a couple of days ago, a couple of weeks ago, a couple of months ago, is that I think that everybody should have gold, silver, Bitcoin in their portfolio. And uh, he says, is there any expectation that as Bitcoin goes up, that gold holders will trade into Bitcoin and the gold price will fall and no longer remain a good store of value? I'm trying to determine if I should be investing in gold at all or only cryptocurrency. Thanks for your time. I look forward to uh, hearing from you. So uh, it's actually a great question. And uh, if my man Peter Schiff was here, uh, he would tell you, of course, uh, that uh, Bitcoin and digital assets are just stupid. Uh, so don't even try it. But uh, thankfully, he's not. He's got his own problems. And uh, I will just say that for me, I still believe that uh, you should have a little gold, silver, Bitcoin. Not because I'm just not a fan of putting all your eggs into one basket. Um, if I just had one stream of revenue, I think that would really hurt me, especially with what's going on uh, with the pandemic and everything else. And a lot of people out there, they only have one stream of revenue. They have their J-O-B, which uh, if you know what J-O-B is, it stands for just over broke. I, I never like jobs. I, I never like really working for somebody else. I think it just sucks. But not to get off topic, um, it's good to hedge your bet. And that's why I have a lot of digital assets and cryptocurrency. So uh, when, I, when he says, well, you know, it's going to just kind of fall by the wayside and people will just get, get more into Bitcoin, uh, they will. Definitely they will. But again, I still think that you should put some of your money into gold. Now, if you're a gold bug, uh, I'm going to appeal to you too. Uh, I think you're, you're um, doing a mistake. You are mistaken. You should uh, hedge your bet. And I mean, gold might go up. Let's be honest. It, it might go up, especially what's going on. But you will never have uh, the returns that you could potentially get in digital assets, cryptocurrency, and specifically uh, if you want to, you know, name one Bitcoin. So yes, gold might go up to 2,500, 4,000. I, I, I have no idea. Uh, but Bitcoin could go up to, and if you watch yesterday's video, could go up to 500,000. And right now it's at 13,000. Could it go up to only 20,000? Yeah. But I mean, look, if it only goes to 20,000, you just gain $7,000. And, uh, uh, you know, let's, let's say it goes 26,000. You doubled your money. I doubt you're going to be able to do that with gold. It's still a great source. So, uh, the question is pretty good. And then there's one more thing I was thinking about, which was this. If you have to look at uh, what is going on behind the scenes, who has all the wealth uh, in the world? And going away from the, the different theories, uh, there's a statistic out and it says that 60% uh, as baby boomers age, their percentage of total U.S. wealth has increased from 20% to nearly 60%. Um, as far as the uh, U.S. wealth. Now, I don't know what it is uh, around the world, uh, but baby boomers, uh, depending on which statistic you look at, uh, somewhere in, in their you know, 58 years old and up, 62 and up, I can't always, always remember uh, how much it is because I always get a little confused. But uh, the older generation has most of the wealth in the United States, which is how it is. And uh, they have been brought up on a principle, which is gold is something that you need to have as a store of value. So as time goes on, yeah, some will get it, some will understand, uh, but some will not, and they will just stick with gold. So again, I think you should put some in gold, but do I think you should put all in the gold or a majority? No, I think it's an asymmetrical investment, uh, which is uh, Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, digital assets. So I would just go that route. Anyhow, I hope that answers your question. Now, I can't really give you a percentage wise because that's, all, that's up for you. Uh, but for me, I am heavily into cryptocurrency and uh, also, uh, you know, uh, real estate and businesses. So uh, as far as a percentage, it's all up to you. Uh, for me, me personally, I think I would go a little bit higher on the crypto. And that's really all I can really tell you. I'm not a uh, financial analyst or a financial planner. So anyhow, hope that answers your question. Uh, let's jump back. All right, so that's it. So thanks for sticking with me. Uh, two things. First, don't forget, if you want that 20% off for Ledger, just use Digital Asset News uh, when you uh, check out. Get, uh, you know, not a bad little discount there. And then also, uh, since we're here at the end, I want to give shout outs to people who signed for Digital Asset News. Really appreciate it. And uh, just some random stuff, especially for the new ones. So, Franz Braun, Hey Buddy TV, Baidan Zhu, Ignacio Mella, uh, Frankster, or Maya, Denise Chet, Tom Cochran, Sam Key, Sergeant Crypto. He's got a YouTube channel. Check that out. And then Johnny Bitcoin. So uh, thanks so much for signing up. Really appreciate it. If you like those types of videos, there's going to be two more that's going to pop up on your left and right. I'll let YouTube do their magic and figure out which ones are best for you. 
And that is it. So uh, thanks for watching. Appreciate it. And uh, see you in the next one.